In a recent video, we showed some of the steps we took to diagnose and fix a high-pressure fuel pump issue on a 2013 Ford Escape with the 1.6 liter EcoBoost engine. Now, what we didn't cover in that video was, well, we found another issue during the test drive, a minor boost leak. And that meant a gamble on parts. Was this going to be a $70 fix or a $700 fix? Well, let's walk through and show you what we found. All right, so we just got back from a test drive. And as you can see, the Escape is back up on the lift. Uh, test drive went great from the fuel perspective. Everything looked good. That high pressure fuel pump's working great. However, I did notice on fast acceleration under load, there was a bit of a shudder, I guess is the best way to put it. So I did hear a little bit of a whistle each time out of uh, out the window. So I set the data logger up and captured some boost items captured the desired boost pressure versus the actual boost pressure and saw where the actual boost was a nice steady curve or the desired boost was a nice steady curve. The actual boost was very jumpy. It seemed that somehow on high boost, we were getting some sort of a boost leak. And I don't think it's wastegate stuff uh, because I hear the whistle and I, it makes me think that it's leaking boost. So um, I did come in and check all the Intercool, intercooler piping and the discharge piping. So that would be here. You can basically check all these connections, make sure everything's good, make sure these hoses aren't torn or anything like that. Everything looked good to me. Um, so what I think was going on is up in here, I already removed it. You can see a spot there. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus. There it goes. So there's basically that hole there with the three uh, screw holes. That is where the uh, boost bypass valve would be. I went ahead and removed it because, uh, well, let me show you. I'll show you what I got here. I wanted to inspect it. So what this does, at a given PSI, it'll open up and allow pressure to bleed off. And as, a, as the way this works, it actually recirculates it back into the intake tube. So it's not like a blow-off valve vented to atmosphere where you'd get a really loud whistle and a pop or anything like that. So... Judging by the age of this vehicle, I suspect that this part may be faulty. Um, so when I went to look for a part number, I could not find a part number for this, except for the two liter EcoBoost, I was able to find a part number. So apparently on the 1.6 EcoBoost, this is part of the entire turbo assembly. So you gotta buy the entire turbo assembly to get this part, at least that's what I believe right now. One reason I pulled it off was to, to continue my research. So I wanted to check it. First of all, I wanted to inspect the O-ring and see if maybe this the O-ring's bad. As you saw me press on that, I'm not gonna press on it too hard, but it doesn't seem like it's completely loose or, or necessarily broken. I can see a little bit inside there, so I'm gonna inspect it a little closer. I just pulled it off. There is a little bit of grease and grime on it, but what I'm hoping to do is clean it And as you can see, there's some numbers on it there and on this side as well, once I clean it, I'm hoping to pull a part number off this and Google the part number because I want to see if the one for the two liter and the 1.5 that I found is the same part. And if it is, it's 60 bucks and I could probably look to replace this if I do believe this is the issue. Uh, as it stands right now, I'd have to replace the entire turbo assembly for $700 just to get this part on the 1.6. So I'd like to figure that out. But that was held on with three Allen head, five millimeter Allen head screws, just took them off and it came right out. There's obviously the single electrical connector. I did take the wheel off to make it a little easier to access, but that's kind of where we are. All right, so I went ahead and cleaned up the uh, BPV here and we're gonna reinstall it because I don't have one to replace it. I just wanted to inspect it and uh, take a look at the O-ring and I don't have an O-ring that would fit in there anyway. So we're gonna put this back on as it is, just nice and cleaned up. Um, but what I really wanted to do was capture the information off the side here, uh, which I was able to get. And I was able to confirm that this part is made by a company called Pureberg in Germany. And it's a Pureberg 7.04269.02, or it's also sold as a Borg Warner 5900, 110, 7136. 
So go ahead and follow along with us here because, well, this is where the parts hunt gets a little interesting. Well, I mean, at least interesting if you're weird like me. You see, Ford part numbers are made up of three sections, the prefix, part number, and revision code. Now for 1999 and above, those prefixes have four characters. The first character is the year or decade code, in our case C, which according to the decoder says 2012. Next two are the product line code, in our case J5, and that should match the platform of this vehicle. But the final character in the prefix is the engineering code. Now if we look at these two part numbers, one of them is G for not assigned, and one of them is Z for Ford Customer Service Division Product Analysis. Now the second section of the part number is the actual part number of the part itself. And of course the final section, well that's the revision code, which usually starts at A. So basically we found two part numbers, CJ5, 9U465BA. Well that isn't found on the US Ford part site that I was on, and it doesn't show as compatible with the 1.6 liter EcoBoost when I plug in the VIN from our 2013 Escape. But it does return when we're searching for the Pierberg part number that we actually took off the part that was on the vehicle. And then there's the other part, CJ5Z9U465-A. Now that shows to be fitting for two liter escapes, but according to the part site we're on, when we plug in our VIN, it says it won't fit our car. However, I was convinced that it will. And the key is in the prefix. Remember, G is unassigned and Z is for Ford customer service. Now my guess is the G part number is from an earlier part number used on earlier turbo cars, and that's why it has a later revision code. And then that part number was changed to Z to fall under the Ford arm when that was adapted to the EcoBoost. So let's go ahead and take a gamble on this part. All right, so it's been a few days. We did get our part from the Ford dealer and they actually contacted us and said, hey, the part you're ordering is not gonna fit the car. And I wrote them back and said, well, here's why I think it'll fit. Can you go ahead and send it anyway? And they did. So that's not an affirmation on their part that it'll fit, but it's my hope that I am correct. So um, I got the new one. We'll show you close up pictures of it. The part number, the Pierberg part number is slightly different. It's a newer part number. But the good news is when I look at them, they are absolutely identical. Um, they seem to function exactly identical. The, the plugs are identical. Even the casting numbers on the plastic are identical. The middle part of a Ford part number is actually the physical part number of the, of the piece. So the part numbers do match in that sense, but there could be some minor differences. But anyway, I am betting that this part is absolutely identical to this part. So we're gonna go ahead and install it on the vehicle. We'll set our data log up. We'll take it out for a drive and see if this solves any of the boost leak that we're seeing at, at high RPM. At the same time, I had talked about uh, in a prior video putting on a cheap aftermarket uh, turbo wastegate solenoid. Um, I felt that I was going to regret that. So since I was ordering parts, I picked up a new one of those. So while we're under there, we're going to put one of these on as well. These are super easy to install. There's almost nothing to really show. We'll just show you when it's on there. You've, you've already seen the other one. They give you the new hoses. So all you got to do is one at a time, take the hoses off the pieces on the turbo assembly, put the new ones on one at a time so you don't forget which goes where, and then plug your connector in. So super simple. So we're going to put this on and then we're going to bolt this back in and uh, we'll show you on camera phone what it looks like and then we'll take it out for a drive. All right, so it's a little hard to get the camera in there to show you, but there's our boost solenoid installed and plugged in. And we do have our new wastegate solenoid up there. It's a little bit out of focus, but we showed you how to install that in some other videos. Really, really smooth, really nice. Can't go much faster over go over the speed limit. All right, so we're wrapped up with the Escape. We just got back from a quick test drive, and uh, well, what I feel, at least so far, is that the part we put in it was a direct replacement because everything looked good on our data log graph, which we'll show you here in the video. It'll either be here or maybe over here or right in front of me, who knows? But we'll post that on the video and show you. The graph looks a heck of a lot different than it did on the first go round. The first graph we showed you had all these spikes where it would build boost and then it would just drop off and recover immediately. But now if you look at the desired boost curve versus the actual boost curve, they follow each other and they look pretty much uh, spot on. So, and in terms of acceleration in the vehicle, it's a lot more linear. There's no surging. 
Um, so that was our boost control valve. Um, now, we also did put in the replacement wastegate solenoid. However, I don't think the wastegate solenoid was the cause. The one that was in there, there were no check engine lights or anything. It was operating fine. Um, it looked like that was actuating as it should, but I just didn't trust that part long term. So while we were under there, we threw an OEM part in. So that's about it. Um, but yeah, if you want to get one of these little things ever, uh, if you've got an Android device, you can get a Bluetooth one. If you have an iPhone, you need to get a Wi-Fi version. We'll post links on the video. And if you have a Ford Mazda, you can use the application for scan light. Costs a few bucks from the app store, but you can data log right on it and you can do a lot of cool stuff. You can also use Torque, a few other things. Um, and, uh, but definitely handy when you're trying to troubleshoot something, being able to data log and pull information. So, well, that's it for our escape right now. It's gonna get back out on the road and we'll do more, of course, here in our shop. And if you enjoy this, subscribe, because we'll always have more on Vortex Garage.